Well, uh, thanks, Paul, and uh, now good afternoon, everyone. It, I must say it's great to see a, uh, a healthy crowd uh, at ABARES again, although one suspects after this evening's festivities you may not be so healthy tomorrow. This includes you, Graeme Jennings, and probably you too, Peter Korish. So just behave yourselves this evening. Thank you. Um, look, uh, firstly, uh, can I apologise for Brent Finlay? Uh, Brent is our president, uh, has been since uh, the end of last year. And really today was Brent's opportunity to shine at ABARES while well, I got to sit in the uh, back stalls with you and watch the goings on. Uh, unfortunately, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we talk about competitiveness of the farm sector, uh, one of the, the biggest drivers uh, is, of course, labour. And in Brent's case, uh, both his father and his uh, farm manager have gone down with an illness, which just leaves Brent to do the shearing. Uh, so that's why he's not with us today. So apologies for him. And of course, that brings challenges for me because uh, the speech I'm doing today, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to change at all because uh, it was locked and loaded. We only found out yesterday. So I'm doing Brent's speech. So if I look slightly confused at any stage during this, uh, you'll probably know why. OK. So what, are we go what am I going to cover? Uh, firstly, to talk about uh, an understanding. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all how to suck eggs. I'm sure you've all got a good understanding of this yourselves. But competitiveness, some of the drivers behind it, uh, and I guess what we can start to do about it in the future. Let's start uh, with a few facts and figures. Uh, the gross value of production uh, in the sector is around, uh, was around $48 billion as of last year. I'm sure uh, Paul and others will give us an update for 13-14. For uh, of course, the food and beverage industry, which is closely associated, is worth around $91 billion over the same period, uh, and exports uh, around $38 billion in, in export earnings. Uh, around uh, about 280,000 employees and around about 225 uh, employed in food, beverage and, and processing. We export roughly 60% of what we produce here in Australia and roughly speaking produce enough to feed around 60 million people from the 130 odd thousand uh, farms that are here in Australia. Uh, competitiveness, all sorts of definitions, but in essence, uh, an ability to sell goods uh, in a market in relation to the ability and performance of others who may be also doing the same thing. Profit, uh, that term is really uh, the eye of the beholder, but in essence, uh, it is a return that a business owner uh, considers necessary to make running the business worthwhile. And productivity uh, is the output-input uh, relationship. Oh, that's done something very interesting. OK. We're not moving now to the next slide. No. Yes, now we are. OK. Competitiveness, of course, is uh, at a number of levels. And in the farm sector uh, and in many other sectors, we're talking about the individual or individual business level. And competitiveness there, I guess, is in essence uh, uh, between farmer and farmer. Uh, in, in their role uh, in the market and trying to get their particular product or goods to market. It also occurs at an industry level. Uh, we see industries in Australia competing right now uh, for the, the consumer dollar for their particular product. And it also occurs on the, on the national level. And let's look at Australia, I guess, in, in that context. We do produce high, high quality goods, particularly uh, a high focus still on commodities, although increasingly uh, more value added product. And we were able to do that by and large uh, with less labour units than many of our competitors. And we also have a, a very solid reputation for clean and safe product. Who are we competing against? Well, a range of different countries, uh, but increasingly against countries that uh, that have um, lower labour costs, particularly, than we do here in Australia. Uh, and they also particularly have uh, 
resources that are as yet undeveloped or less well developed. And that's not so much the case in, the, in Australia where we have limited opportunities there for further resource development. We also have higher labour costs. And in some areas, we also have uh, uh, infrastructure that's in need of uh, upgrade as well. So I guess, in essence, whether it's at an individual level or industry or a national level, we're all seeking that competitive sweet spot uh, which combines those elements of profit and productivity, uh, but also the element of, of innovation as well. In considering some of the, uh, what some of the impacts on competitiveness are, uh, let's just have a look at, on the domestic front uh, firstly. Uh, when we're talking about Australia, there are limits to both, the, I guess, the natural resources and the human capital elements uh, that are here right now in terms of, of agriculture and the farm sector. And of course, we compete with other sectors for both of these. And uh, I mean, mining's just one example of, of where we do compete. Uh, as I said before, we also compete on that international level uh, with other nations uh, who, again, might have a, a different or, or better uh, access to natural resources and, of course, those lower wage costs we talked about before. When you're talking to a farmer, and, and Brent would have, I'm sure, made this point today, at a micro level, uh, there's a number of factors in, in, impacting there in terms of costs. But particularly input prices are a key driver of, of on-farm competitiveness. And some of those factors are listed there, uh, including energy, water, uh, access to and cost of finance, uh, labour, land, transport, etc. And of course, we also know that policy and regulation can be a cost to the farm sector as well, uh, both in terms of, of people's time uh, in, in filling out forms and, and what have you, uh, and, and of course, uh, the regulation itself. At, at the macro level, if we're considering uh, returns in particular, uh, much of what we talk about here, and I guess this, this does lead to frustration when you, when you are talking to farmers about this issue, is much of this can be out of, particularly out of their control, out of our control. So obviously the, the structure of the market itself, um, the influence of the supply chain, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later, uh, global commodity prices, uh, the influence of the Australian dollar, which you know, I'm sure has been mentioned more than once uh, before I've spoken today, has had a, a large impact on, on our sector. Uh, natural resources, we, we also talked about before. Uh, of course, the increasing capacity of our competitors, as I've mentioned, and uh, you know, Brazil's just one example, both in terms of their access to resources uh, their increasing sophistication in their marketing is just... Uh, and to think that we... In, uh, in the speech that was just given from Jamie there, um, there's this sense that uh, China and Asia is, uh, is a potential pot of gold for the Australian agriculture sector, and there's no doubt there is many opportunities that are going to present themselves there, uh, but to, to think that they're going to land in our lap is another matter. Uh, of course, all of these things both macro and micro, uh, point to uh, terms of trade. I don't, I'm a broken record if I suggest that uh, they've been challenging and declining. I think most people are aware. Uh, and we also need to consider the productivity curve as well. So what can we do? Well, industry's got a role uh, and government's got a role as well to play here. Um, from the government perspective, of course, there is a need for continued investment in infrastructure, and, and there's no doubt you've seen uh, the government themselves have been talking about this area. They've been talking about it uh, as a pr promoting for jobs as well. In the agriculture sector, um, there are potentially some of those very large infrastructure projects, nation building style projects that will be very important. And I think this government have certainly been talking about in our sector uh, that rail link, uh, obviously Melbourne through to, through to Brisbane is one example, 
but we also need to look at uh, some of those infrastructure bottlenecks uh, that might be on a smaller scale, but can also deliver significant advantage through to the industry. Uh, improved market access. You know, this is, I can't understate how vital this is uh, for the continued growth and the competitiveness of, of our sector. And again, uh, we've seen this government make a, a good start with the South Korean uh, free trade agreement. Uh, but also, we, we would obviously like to see similar ambition when we're talking about Japan, China, uh, and a range of other uh, multilateral and, uh, and also plurilateral, as they're calling them now, uh, deals. Now, increased research development and extension funding. Again, this is seen as vital. If you look at the, all the factors and the ones that we can start to control, and the ones particularly that the government uh, can influence, uh, innovation and productivity are going to be vital. And so both increased investment from a, a government perspective, but also, and perhaps more importantly, uh, their ability to change either policy and or tax settings uh, to be able to leverage further private investment is also going to be essential. It goes without saying that we need to reduce uh, regulatory costs. Uh, and of course, we want government to be able to work with industry towards all those goals. So what are the changes in the, in the policy environment in a general sense uh, that we would need to see? Well, obviously less costs, uh, less red tape, increased competition uh, in the marketplace, and, and policy settings that can provide for all parts of the supply chain and give them the opportunity to, to be profitable uh, in this country. Uh, so again, some specifics and, and areas that the government will be considering and are actively working on now will include the red tape review, uh, competition review, and of course, uh, the tax review as well. Clearly, industry has a, a role to play here as well. And if I go back to uh, some of uh, Mick Keogh's earlier work in this area, uh, Mick noted that in terms of our cost competitiveness uh, when compared to other nations, and, and I think from memory it was looking back over 30 years compared to the US and Canada, uh, we, we have been well below the US and Canada uh, over that time period in terms of cost competitiveness. Uh, why is that the case? Firstly, because of our wage costs, and secondly, also and primarily uh, about our exchange rate. Uh, our ability to affect and change either one of those two factors, uh, you'd have to say, is pretty limited. And so it leads you to say, well, wh where can you go to from there? And obviously, lifting productivity uh, is one of those areas. Uh, how can you do that? And the second line item there is about research, development, extension. And that's all around uh, lifting productivity and innovation. That's all going to be very important for the future. Uh, also, as I said, investing in infrastructure. And when it comes to our sector, as well as the, the government investing, uh, you know, again, we need to be more innovative in some of these areas about attracting private capital uh, into the sector, whether that's domestic uh, and or foreign. Goes without saying to continue to seek efficiencies, that's important. Uh, working cooperatively uh, together. Knowing the market, but also, as I said before, getting out there and developing those markets. And we, you know, we have many of the RDCs here today and some of the, uh, the private exporters who are heavily involved in that area. And, and the key message there is these opportunities will not just land in our lap. Uh, they have to be eked out and the hard work and the relationships uh, need to be built. Um, we've talked a little bit and, and certainly through our uh, blueprint for Australian agriculture, uh, this idea of, um, of a brand Australia concept, which we still think will be very important. Yes, there's increased value adding, uh, and that will, that will certainly assist in the future. But we are still largely, and certainly in terms of volume, uh, an exporter of bulk commodities. We have that safe and clean ex uh, reputation, but we don't do as good a job as nations like uh, our competitors like New Zealand in being able to brand ourselves in those markets uh, across the board. Uh, well, obviously, obviously, with those individual commodities uh, uh, positioning coming in underneath that. Uh, 
Another area, of course, is changing con consumer tastes and, and of course, uh, how retailers themselves are responding to those, those uh, changing tastes. And, of course, that can impact on our competitiveness as well. And, and that's really uh, back to us on, as to how we manage that and how we can, uh, how we, how we can influence that ourselves. So in summary, uh, as we've talked about, competitiveness is a combination of the factors we've talked about uh, earlier on, whether that's efficiencies, investment, how we work together, getting those policy settings right, uh, and particularly investing in innovation, they're all important. Um, all of this is in line with the work that certainly NFF has been doing, both through the blueprint uh, and, uh, and now leading to the government response through the white paper. And you know, we will ourselves be focusing uh, on this as, as part of the path forward. We know the government themselves and, and Minister Joyce have talked about a focus on competitiveness and particularly on farm gate return. And, and so look, this augurs well, I think, for uh, a coming together of the minds on this issue and the ability to work together to drive competitive, better competitiveness, increase competitiveness in our sector. Thank you very much.